we have different versions of visualization of EEG waveform now but it's a bit too heavy on the system you can hear my GPU or CPU going from the GPU yes we need to make this one more responsive there's a seizure meant to be in there I can't really see it it's a bit unusual and it's always slow yeah, chat chat gs might be quicker yes we have the seizures there yeah however when we start the indexing it's jumping to another location in the file yeah so we're using the javascript code it's working okay to the current to it's so github copilot generating snippets but that won't work update charge function yes responsible for updating the chart okay yeah, it calculates it's the calculation for the index a uh, range start okay so the start index yeah we already have the input the bounds this range start oh suggesting a couple of options for it all right that's what we currently have that's suggesting getting rid of the debounce can try it out for sure we'll be trying it out locally so we have to run this python backend okay now it's super slow just super slow as well okay we get the thing but the uh, it's the calculation I can't transcribe my voice properly that the start index is not working correctly when selected when used different window size is being applied and when scrolling through I do not see the same data uh, we have to check that troubleshoot and all the provided JavaScript code is designed to fetch EEG data visualize it using chart.js, and allow the user to interactively adjust the data view. The chart is configured as a line chart with several options, including linear scaling on the x-axis, responsive behavior, and various plugins for legend display and tooltips. Each data set corresponds to a channel of EEG data, with the data processed through an adaptive sampling function to handle different zoom levels. Well, that doesn't work, does it? Yeah, it's perhaps that adaptive sampling is stuffing something up. Do we have another code? I like the control uh, for it. Might be some down sampling happening as well. I don't know. I have to check. Uh, no, probably not. Doesn't look like you know, printing the size of the file. It should create a blog with it with the original code maybe currently the question is do we use plotly or charges uh, we also have this code that seems to work a bit better at the moment can you explain the differences but we'll touch on the difference between chat js and plotly the Python script uses the Pandas library for data manipulation and Plotly.express for data visualization. Pandas is imported for reading and manipulating data. Plotly.express is imported for creating interactive plots. Us is used to handle file paths. The JavaScript code is designed for web-based interactive visualization, fetching data from a server and dynamically updating the chart based on user input. The Python script is designed for local data analysis, reading data from a file, and creating interactive plots using Plotly.express. Both approaches have their own strengths and are suited to different use cases. The choice between them depends on the specific requirements of the application, such as whether it needs to run in a web browser or as a standalone script for data analysis. Yeah, eventually we like both to be a Flask application. Uh, can you touch on the difference between the second code is using uh, Plotly, whereas the first one is using Chat.js? Can you give details on that? Uh, can you eventually suggest how to turn this Python code into a Flask application? We want to primarily rely on the JavaScript code and only do as little as possible in uh, backend Python. 
we also need all the functionality that we had before including checking if the application is running locally or in production single uh, what's called prompts work best don't they you just do yes yeah, single prompt um no i don't like that response it's hallucinating a bit currently we actually have the thing working so we'll probably have to start uh, another one yeah let's quickly start a new chat that obviously didn't work um uh, want to turn we want to turn this code into a flask application uh, using the following structure okay we have dynamic data loading application does not doesn't load the entire data set into memory, preventing the system overload. Uh, okay, that's not a problem anymore. Okay, we do want to use interactive visualization. A uh, plotly for the front end. Interactive line plots that display multiple EG channels over time. Users can zoom pan and select specific time windows to closely inspect the data. That sounds great, but don't particularly care how you improve performance yeah without blocking the user interface sounds good maintaining responsive experience even during extensive data processing tasks sounds good user friendly web interface includes controls such as sliders for time range selection and options uh, for overlaying multiple channels performance monitoring well Sometimes performance monitoring is actually taking up resources, isn't it? So we're expecting something similar to that. That's what the current Python code does, but that's only running locally. We'd like to actually share it with you. Uh, we would like the output uh, to look like the image provided. Uh, this code works well, so we would like to stick to it as much as possible. And we would like to move whatever is possible to the front end JavaScript, turn this into a Flask application. And we really don't need any buttons. So we'd like the data to be loaded as the page loads. And then we should be able to scroll it live. Uh, so we've got this long prompt. Let's see if it can do it. It should look something like this. Let's. Yeah, so there's advantages and disadvantages using uh, yeah the difference between using chart.js and Blockly. Uh, pretty much. Okay, we have the code. Yeah, it keeps changing that folder, but that's okay. We can modify it uh, manually. Yeah, it's assuming it's in the static folder of the same uh, folder where the app, the backend is, but that's not the case we really need this two dot thing in there okay html should be simplified we don't need the load that we just have the plot a javascript used to have 26 lines 44 yeah we're moving most of the stuff to javascript why do we have sampling rate twice it's not actually being used, so they can get rid of it. It's CSS again, and it's already running. Oh, come on. And yeah, the GPT gods are not being nice. Hey, no, we don't need to do it. We can load hey, this data file, is small. It can be loaded memory and then we can use it to plot the data. Here we essentially converting the following code to a Flask application. That's right. Let's try again. Yeah, I have a good feeling about this one. Still need to change the folder for the data file. 
we should have a simple index html code the javascript is surprisingly too short script.js well yes that's what it should look like the plotly javascript from a cdn is working okay but there is something something is wrong it's converting a figure to json no we don't want okay we want to do as much as possible in javascript so is it possible to just pass the data file from the backend and then just use javascript for everything else most of the stuff should be happening in javascript that looks more like it we need to update the html we failed to get the data yeah we need to be able to check if we are in production or not we might need that bit that checks if we are running locally or in production okay we'll get the data this is nice i get my the gpu is doing extra extra hours but i do like it this image versus that image can you tell the difference see what it says don't want to prompt it too much hey, no i like uh, the whole uh, data file uh, being fetched and loaded into the front end so if we can uh, keep the python script as is but within javascript can we show a specific uh, section of the file of the data on screen when loading the page yes we're keeping the python script as is we're essentially loading the whole file into memory i think I like to make the screen bigger as well no 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 that's not what i meant and no that's not what i meant i want the app to look like the image when uh, loading also we would like to return back to the following code we're having trouble with uh, doing all this in uh, github copilot hey this code is working okay but we would like to change the view when the page loads currently it looks like image one and we would like it to look like image two right easy <laughs> i don't know why it's taking is so many resources and it looks uh, great yeah, it's looking pretty good yeah we'll do production check why are we changing html should be it is it looks like it why is it still i have to clear the cache yeah the colors are the same all the time which is good it's displaying then yeah so we have that running okay this is working well make this available for you well it's already available uh, but hopefully we can actually improve and um, make it better so it will have description and everything and i'll see you next time bye